Hello everyone, welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, folks, comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I wanna thank everyone that does like watching and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen folks, there's a link to you down below. It has the links to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there, follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I talk back. Also down there as well as links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Listen, folks, Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be sitting down and talking about the New York Jets. we got a lot to discuss. All kind of things are going on. All kind of things are moving and shaking, and we're going to talk about it. Call in. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. So with that said and done and put to the side, I've come to talk to you folks today. <laughs> About Mike LaFleur. Boy, oh boy, the rumors are moving. Things are moving and shaking around the Jets facility, all right? According to all the rumors and reports that we're hearing, okay? Listen, <laughs> it depends on who you're listening to. There's NFL, you know, reporters coming out saying that he's fired. There's guys within our own beat, you know, Rosenblatt, uh, Hughes as well has come out and said he's not fired. That's just a, you know, that report is, is not not right at all. It's not correct in any form or fashion. There's rumors flying about, you know, Woody Johnson wanting to move on from him, getting rid of him and other people in the staff. Things are crazy right now. You know, rumors again are swirling with the Jets. Now, I want to put this out there. As of right now that I'm filming this, he is not officially fired, okay? But again, things are in motion. Things are moving and shaking. We'll see how it plays out, but I want to discuss this with y'all, all right? So again, Rumors are swirling. We're hearing from different people outside the Jets, you know, facility NFL reporters. I think his name was Aaron Wilson. He came out and said, Michael LaFleur is fired. The Jets have fired him. He's moving on. Then we have our own beat guy saying, no, he's not fired. He's not gone. That report is incorrect. Well, this is coming after a rumor got put out as well from Michael Lombardi. Recently, Michael Lombardi came out, and this is a direct quote. He said, I hear the owner wants LaFleur gone. And Sulla is digging into the trenches. It will be interesting to see how this plays out. I heard the owner, Woody Johnson, wants to get rid of the entire offensive staff. Whoa. Now listen, we know, we all know that the New York Jets offense has struggled this year. You know, pretty mightily at times. All right. Now, for the most part of the season, the New York Jets defense has been unbelievable. Even when they were bad they weren't giving up much of anything, right? The Jets' defense stood out. We talk about the stars, Quinn and Williams, Sauce Garner, uh, you know, all the guys that stepped up and played unbelievable this year, right? That really balled for us. Carl Lawson, Jermaine Johnson, the defense was good. The offense was one of the biggest issues, right? And this year, because our defense kept us in games, and at one time we were hot, we were like 6-3, and 6-4, and four, Everybody started looking at the team and thinking, yo, this is a playoff team. The playoff expectations started to rise. Now, again, the New York Jets have not made the playoffs in 12 years. So fans, of course, were salivating. We're like, okay, we're finally going to do it. In, in year two, when nobody really was thinking about playoffs, all of a sudden we started balling. We got hot after we beat Green Bay. Like, things were, things were rolling. And then things just fell apart down the stretch. And the offense continued to not show up in game after game after game, right? And so when you look at the situation with the Jets' offense, the struggles in the red zone are glaring. I think we're like 31st in red zone scoring. We were not finishing drives. That was our biggest issue. Our biggest issue, we were not getting in the end zone when necessary. And a lot of those times, you can look directly at Michael Floor and his play calling. More notably, you look at that Vikings game, we were on the one. <laughs> and some of the play calling there, and again, if Braxton Berrios catches that ball, we probably take that game. But the fact that we were leaning on that when we were a power running football team and couldn't get it done on the one against the Vikings, boy, that rubbed a lot of Jets fans wrong. And we saw, again, struggles in different games in the red zone due to Michael Flores' play calling. He would get too cute when he would get down there. And so as the season continued on and we went on our losing streak, and the offense wasn't showing up, and Jets fans and other people as well started continuing to getting more frustrated with Mike LaFleur and his play calling. There's a lot of people calling for his head. You saw the struggles. We're calling for his head. We want him out of here. There was a lot of Jets fans screaming, fire this guy, get him out of here. A lot of people in the media talking about the Jets' struggles. 
Now, Sulla has come out and talked about this as well, right? There was a reporter that asked him if he was felt confident in Mike LaFleur during the season, during the end of the season. And this was, again, when the Jets' offense was struggling. And he said, listen, he basically came out and said, look, I'm not going to scapegoat the guy, okay? You know, if, if they would have scapegoated me when I was with the Niners, with Kyle Shanahan, there was, a, there was a year we only won four games, something like that. And they could have scapegoated me and told me, get up out of here. You know, you're the guy we're blaming for all the issues here. You're fired. You're gone. He said, he, you know, Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan didn't do that. He kept me around. We worked on things. We fixed things. And that's history. Now look where I'm at, right? So when he said that during the later part of the season, I took that as he's not going to fire Mike LaFleur. He's not going to scapegoat him. He also talked about there being other issues. Now, if you look at this situation, and I'm not caping for LaFleur, but I am saying this. You have to look at the injuries that the New York Jets have offensively that have caused us to caused us to struggle as well. You have to put that into context too, right? You look at the issues, Becton, gone. ATV, he got injured this season. IR, gone. Max Mitchell on IR, gone. Fant and Brown were gone for periods of the season as well. He was missing them. Even we, our backups that would come in, Aboye, was gone for a while. So you had a mishmash offensive line. And if you look at the Jets' <laughs> offense and where they struggled, their offensive line struggled mightily, especially down the end of the stretch in our losing streak. We st Just one game, Just I, I just remember off the top of my brain, that Jaguars game was so frustrating to watch. The offensive line was terrible in that game. And the Jags didn't have any of their, like, big hitters along their defensive line. Fadu Kasi was out. Uh, you know, their other guy, the pass rusher, was out too. They weren't, they didn't have much of anybody. And they were just bull rushing our offensive line and bowling them over and being able to get pressure that way. Our offensive line struggled. Struggled mightily. He also missed Corey Davis a period of this time too. And Brees Hall, our home run hitter, went down. We missed out on him, you know, down the stretch of the season as well. And you can look at that and say, hey, that's why the Jets running game fell off. Now, we talked about the offensive line. We talked about Brees Hall. You look at the Jets offense, they struggle to run the ball. We're in a run first offense. We're in a Shanahan offense. That's what it's about, running the football and running the football effectively. Our running game this year was not very good at all. Do you know that Brees Hall, who went out on IR, okay, got hurt against Denver, uh, tore his ACL, he's on IR. Do you know that Brees Hall is our leading rusher for the year? He's still our leading rusher. He hasn't played football since October 23rd, and he still leads the Jets in rushing yards. I think he's got, got like 463 yards. He, he's literally our leading rusher. That's all that you need to know about how bad the Jets running game was this year. And again, down the stretch, we were awful running the football. In this system, in this, it's going to kill you. So when you're not running the football effectively, guess what? you got to lean on your quarterback. Well, you can look at, you know, Mike LaFleur can say, hey, I couldn't run the ball. My offensive line jacked up. My home run hitter in Brees Hall is gone too. So now I got to lean on Zach Wilson, who was our quarterback for quite a bit this season, right? He's terrible. <laughs> He's terrible. You look, at, you look back at the losses that we have, you can point a lot of those directly back to Zach Wilson and his inability to run in a functioning NFL offense, right? And I love Zach. I want to put this out there. I love him. Everybody knows that. But come on, we got to be real about his play. This guy was missing screen passes. He was throwing 10, he was throwing the ball 10 yards over guys' heads that were right in front of him. His inability to produce within this scheme, a guy's wide open, right? killed us. You can go back and blame, you can directly blame Zach Wilson for the two losses to the Patriots. If the Jets win those two games, they're in the playoffs. You know? So, uh, the, the, you can look, and Mike LaFleur can say, hey, these are the issues that I had. My offensive line was, was scritch and scratch. It was jacked up. I couldn't run the football. My home run hitter, my big you know, running back, Brees Hall, is gone for the season. Right? He gets hurt. Then I'm stuck with Zach Wilson, who couldn't hit a, a broadside of a barn. You know, He couldn't throw a football into the ocean at the beach if he wanted to. You know, So, the things there, and even again, when Mike White came about, and he, they were able to get him out there. He played well within the offense, but then he got hurt. And again, down the stretch, we saw, especially that Lions game, if you take away those big splash plays, Zach Wilson didn't play very well in that game. And then the Jags, when he really got exposed again and was benched again uh, against the Jags, which killed us right there. So it's tough, man. It is tough. We'll see what happens going forward. 
I want to get y'all thoughts on this. So comment down below. Let me know what y'all think about, you know, Mike LaFleur. Do you think he'll get fired? Uh, if you do think he'll get fired, why? And if he doesn't, if you don't think he should be fired, why you don't think he should be fired? But I'll tell you what, a guy to keep in mind if he does get fired is Gary Kubiak. Gary Kubiak is a guy that can come in here and run this offense. You'd have to get a guy that knows the offense inside and out to come in here. You can't go get some other offensive coordinator with another system because that would almost reset our offense because, again, you'd have guys in their first year in a brand new offense trying to learn it and figure things out, and that takes time to learn and move forward with. So Gary Kubiak is a guy that we could see brought in and possibly the Jets' offensive coordinator. He's also been mentioned as being a guy that they would target for a senior offensive assistant position here as well, and Sully has talked about him, uh, not, not him in particular, but wanting to get a senior offensive assistant in here to help with the quarterback, mainly Zach Wilson, and figure things out with him going forward because they want to continue to coach him and, and do right by him, you know, in their in their words. So comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. Let's talk about this. Let's go back and forth. I can't wait to hear from you people. You folks have a good one. Peace.